Hello friends and enemies, welcome back to Happy For Now. It's me Isabel here with my November wrap up. So I'm excited, November was a really good reading month. I don't know that I'll ever replicate it, we'll see. Uh, at least not in December, it's not gonna be replicated. Uh, not with Vlogmas happening. So <laughs> November was a wild month, we're gonna start there. Do not compare your reading to my November reading y'all, because seriously, I had a lot going on. <laughs> Uh, and I read a lot because of it. So uh, we're gonna talk about stats and I will mention the books that I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up and in my volume one manga vlog when we get to those sections but for the most part there's gonna be links and you need to go over there and watch it because there's too many books to talk about everything again <laughs> and we're not gonna be here for three hours um, because I do actually think 65 books would take me three hours so let's dive right into stats. So first things first I had two challenges in the month of November. We had Nano Remo put on by Bethany over at Beautifully Bookish Bethany. My first goal was 7,500 pages. I hit that very quickly and then stretched my goal to 12,000 pages and I did it. I did indeed read over 12,000 pages in the month of November, which is absolutely bananas to me. I basically scraped by the skin of my teeth. Uh, on the last day because I read one a manga to make sure I hit it like I had like 150 some ish pages left and I was like okay we're gonna read a manga and we will hit it which also put me at well over my goal for 30 and 30 which my first goal is always 30 manga volumes for 30 and 30 and then my second goal is like 40 to 45 my stretch goal is 45 I hit 40 I'm thrilled that's enough for me personally like I'm very happy about this um yeah so I read 40 volumes out of the 30 which is great there's 10 volumes per page so I filled four pages which made my heart happy that's that's all I wanted stats wise yes that's right I read 65 books that those broke down into 12,029 pages uh, my average rating was a 4.35 which is not surprising and I read so much manga which generally bumps my ratings most manga I pick up I tend to give four stars I usually enjoy what I'm picking up <laughs> I read 13 KU titles, four library books, one book on script. I had zero rereads. And then our age group breakdown was 39 adult titles and 23 YA titles and three middle grade titles. Not too bad. Our format breakdown was nine ebooks, eight audiobooks, six graphic novels, 40 manga, and yeah, no physical books. So <laughs> I didn't read any physical books. I don't usually. And then the last stat is new to me and debuts. I did read 28 new to me authors. I didn't read any debut books this month though. So I would like to work on that next year. I would like to read more debut novels. Even if they don't come out that year, I would like to read more authors first. I actually have two freaking DNFs this month, y'all too. Like, which again, not something that happens very often, but here we are. I'm setting the tone for 2023. And that tone is stop earlier. Don't torture yourself unless it's gonna be really funny and I don't think either of these would have been funny enough to justify it. First we have in the DNFs Authentically Izzy by Pepper Basham or something like that. I don't know. This um, I did for my birthday vlog. You can go check that out if you're curious. I'll link it down below as well. I read this and I thought it'd be really fun to do things that she does in the book. I got this book not knowing one it was all epistolary so it's all emails going back and forth which like I'm not against okay I don't mind that format but the problem comes when it's in modern day like today and the only way she communicates to most of her family is via email and it's weird and she's like a librarian they're saying but she's like at most a library clerk there's a whole lot of issues there um, and I didn't, I didn't read the full book description. This is on me. Uh, it's kisses only. So I just was like, I'm done. It was too much Lord of the Rings. It was too much back and forth and no like good dialogue really. Like the good parts were good, but then it was like just too much not good in between. And they were all just so obsessed with finding her someone. She's 30. She's, you know, destitute, obviously just destined to be a spinster and never find love and just it was weird like it was just a little too much for me uh, and I also I felt like they weren't listening to what she was interested in a partner her like cousin who kept trying to set her up and that bothered me a lot because I just feel like if you want to help someone find love you need to listen to their desires for that relationship not just like what you think that means like just because she's into books <laughs> doesn't mean everyone she dates 
has to also be into books in the same way necessarily and then like also just completely missing the mark on that like one of the guys collected dental encyclopedias or something that's not the same thing as the kind of book she's into anyways anyways beyond the point I just couldn't handle it for a 30 year old she was written so young and weird and it just was not working for me so I DNF'd it <laughs> the next book I DNF'd comes out this month um and it's what you're gonna do by Avery Flynn I read about 10 percent of it uh, literally on the 30th, uh, because I was like, oh, that's coming out soon, I should start it. And I have not had such a visceral reaction to how a book was written in a very long time, but this did not work for me in any capacity. So I DNF'd it about 10%. So we follow Tilda, who is uh, part of the big witch family in town. They're like the most renowned witches, whatever, you know, type thing. She was born a dud with no magical abilities, and her arch nemesis and her have been set up on like four different dates. Well, her POV literally has like asterisk waves, like RPG text. Her talking to you as the reader and like completely breaking the fourth wall, which I'm not opposed to, but this was so cringy. I, I was having secondhand embarrassment reading this book, okay? Like I was having secondhand embarrassment. I don't have a ton of secondhand embarrassment when I read. This book for sure gave me secondhand embarrassment. So um, I DNF'd it. It may be for you. Maybe the audio is a little better. So for my one star reads now, I did read Rammed by the reviews of this book by Leonard Delaney. This was on my birthday live. If you were there, we read it live. It was a fun time. Um, these books are just real dumb, y'all. <laughs> Like I got I got nothing for you on this one. This one was like almost worse than the other ones in a weird way. It was just weird. It was even weirder than the other ones somehow at times. So I read that. So I didn't have any other one stars or two stars. So we're gonna move straight into my threes and three and a halfs. First up we have The Darkest Fire by Gina Schulwalter. I talked about this in my mid-month. Also in my mid-month is a three and a half star, which is Sasha Masha by Agnes Borinsky. Check that out if you're curious about it. It was a Libro FM arc that I got. It was interesting. Uh, then I read Stuffed by Jessica Godzilla. This was my member's pick for November. And I'm sad <laughs> because absolutely no one had any content notes about this book and their reviews. And it's okay, it happens, like I get it we're all at different stages when we review a thing right and most of my friends had read this a while ago so like i also understand why they didn't have it but this book has so much internalized fat phobia that it was just really hard to read at times it opens with the whole first chapter centering heavily on binge eating and shame about eating potato chips and body checking just in chapter one and it kind of like continues lightly throughout the book it's not as heavy as it is in chapter one i feel like the rest of the book but it's still present and there's still lots of like comments. This is a brother's best friend romance, which is why I was interested in it. And it's cute for the most part. I wish it was like a smidge shorter maybe. I didn't really need their third act breakup. I felt like they just needed to talk for five freaking seconds to figure it out. Um, but for the most part it worked. I liked how the ending worked and how he like, what happened at the end to reunite them was really cute. And it overall was a fun time besides those random moments where you were just like, why, why, why do we have to be mean about food or bodies? All right, next is my four stars, which we have a lot more of. So first I have a Merry Little Meet Cute and Cocky Client, which are both in my mid-month wrap-ups. And then we're gonna go straight into the new stuff. So Give Me More by Sarah Kate I read. This was also part of my birthday vlog. This was fun. I was pretty happy with this. I My biggest disappointment is that for being a book set around sex clubs and like dungeons and like BDSM club things, there wasn't that much of that in this book and I just wanted like a little bit more. But I loved the bi awakening of this. I loved the MMF elements of this, like swords crossed. We figured out like, you know, a late in life bisexual awakening happening or pansexual, whatever you want to call it. I don't think he gave it a name specifically. Um, I felt like the third act part was just like, whatever, it didn't really need to happen. I think it could have just been more of a conversation on page than him like going off on this like journey to like heal. I quite liked it. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it, especially because the main character has my name, which is why I read it in my birthday vlog, because I thought that would be fun. So it was a good time. Uh, sexy, smutty, just a fun time overall. So I read Birthday Sex by T. Russ. This is a great short little birthday novella to read on your birthday or if you want to do a birthday themed reading thing. This features 
two people that hook up every year on each other's birthdays finally figuring out that they like each other and want to hook up more than on their birthdays and actually date and it was really hot and smutty it was a good freaking time I had a blast with this, so highly recommend. Next, I read A Match Made for Thanksgiving by Jackie Lau. This is one that I've had on my TBR for like fall forever because it's set around Canadian Thanksgiving, just so you all know. But this was absolutely adorable. I had so much fun reading it. This is a one night stand. She shows up at his parents' house on Thanksgiving though because they invited a bunch of different people for different tropes because the grandma reads romance books. And so she themed each of the grandson's meetings around tropes and the granddaughter. So we had like a second chance romance. We had their trope, which was a one night stand, but she was set up with his brother and there was like opposites attract and delightful, just delightful y'all. I really, really, really cannot wait to read the rest of the series. I'm going to be reading more of these this month. I might finish the box set. I got the box set for like $2.99. Great deal for like four novellas. So yeah, this was really, really cute. I loved the way it played out. I loved their romance. I just think this was one of those ones that was just like a nice, fun read that was just really solid. Then I read No Thank You, which is by Alexandra Warren. This is the first one in the Fines Family novelettes. These came out in February of this year and they're Thanksgiving time themed. This one was really cute. She is dating, this is a younger man, older woman, first of all. Second of all, she's dating a sibling or cousin that she dated like of someone else she dated he first saw her a couple years ago at their thanksgiving gathering i was like i like her i want to date her later ran into her they started dating he's attempting to convince her to come home with him and she like doesn't want to do it she's like absolutely not this is like not a good idea so that's that's not what happens if she goes and it's a great time <laughs> Then I read Thank You Next, which is by Nicole Falls. This is the second book in the Fine Brothers series. This is Childhood Friends to Lovers. She accidentally, like a few years back, heard him and uh, another girl like in the field breaking up, I think, or something. I don't remember completely. But anyways, she like hasn't seen him in years and ends up having to go pick him up from the airport now. And he tricks her into like losing, like that he can't get into his mom's house. So she has to, he has to come hang out with her. And it's just this whole thing because he wants to take a shot with her finally and is determined to do so and she doesn't realize this and he's gonna do what he has to do to make that happen and it was just really funny and cute they had a great dynamic great banter great sex as always i expect nothing at less from Ale from all three of these authors in the fines brothers trilogy to be honest these are all great then i read smash and grab by maz maddock this is a dinosaur shifter romance i know steph over at novelty corner loves this series I was looking for something easy and quick to listen to while I ran errands one day and I saw the audio was on Hoopla so I said let's do this. Let's pick this up. This is a men loving men romance. He is a anthropologist and like researching these fossils and stuff uh, and this guy is part of this crew that acquires the fossils um, illegally we'll say to rehome them back where they belong. <laughs> and with who they belong with. So he does that, he takes his fossil and he steals him too, like he brings him with him. We'll call it stealing. And it's their romance and them on the run. It's just like a really quick rompy adventure romance. And it's really funny when the guy shifts into a dinosaur and the love interest is like, that's not real. So that was really funny and great to watch. I'm really curious to pick up more of these. I think that they're just a really fun, quick novellas to read. So if you're looking for dinosaur shifters, definitely want to check out. There's not a ton of dinosaur shifters out there that are like solid. So I feel like this is one that's going to be in my rotation until I get through the series. Next, we have my four and a halfs. I read Demon it's a Bargain by Katie Robert. I talked about that in my mid-month. This had pegging. So what more do you need? Next is my five stars. Y'all, I read the Quint like everyone's birthday book. The, the book that I also see wrecked for birthdays. This is not birthday girl. I've already read that. Birthday Shop by Rilsey Adams. This was so freaking fun, y'all. So I was thrilled to give this five stars because I didn't think I would like this as much as I would, but this is about a girl having her birthday party at her parents' house. It is in the Caribbean islands and they have a house party. And she takes her shot with her brother's best friend. So we know I love a brother, brother's best friend. I love her taking her shot. Well, it goes further than her taking her shot, obviously and culminates in more and he has to like confront her brother and tell him what happened. There's like public sex in this. It is smoking hot. Uh, Rosie is so talented and I just adore her writing. So again, if you haven't read this one, this is another birthday one I can't recommend enough. 
Uh, but yeah, it was just such a fun theme. She was also a travel influencer and stuff and like their issues were resolved relatively quickly as far as like him living in London and all that. Like it just, it worked. It worked really well. And uh, yeah, I was just so happy I read this. Then I read Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I'm giving this five stars. It's middle grade. If I'd read this as a middle grade aged person, I would have loved this immensely. I just really enjoy these Brick Warden Presents books personally. I've not really found any that I didn't like. So if I like it, it's usually five star because they're just fun. And I don't have a ton of thoughts about it beyond that. I really enjoyed the myth stuff in this one and like belief on things because again it's not Judeo-Christian centered so to me that's interesting because I very burnt out on those myths if that makes sense um and beliefs. So this was really interesting and I love that it's her and her best friend and her brother on the run to try and go save her dad and they end up finding a lot of people and things along the way and it was just really really cute. It was a fun time. Then I read Thank Me Later by Christina C. Jones. This is the last book in the Fines Brothers series. This one was my favorite of the three, of course, not surprising. Uh, the setup for this one is a fake date slash fake girlfriend fiance for a guy who's a lawyer and his friend's wife runs a girlfriend program thing. <laughs> it's kind of basically an escort. We'll call it, it's an escort. Like there's nothing wrong, like not necessarily explicitly sexual escort, but like if you need someone to go with you to the thing, she will help you find that. Uh, this was just really fun. <laughs> this was so freaking fun. They end up accidentally being outed via Facebook, which was really funny, I think. And it was just him trying to impress people for, like, to show his firm that he worked at as a lawyer, that he was, like, family focused, because that was one of their big things. And it just was really freaking funny to watch unfold and how it all worked. And I just, I loved it. It was really, really good. It was a great time. Okay. Now, I had one six star that we're not going to talk about, and I had two more five stars that we're not going to talk about because of the HarperCollins strike. If you're unaware, there is a current strike at HarperCollins from their union because they are not negotiating currently. So I personally um, will not be reviewing any of their books on my wrap-ups. This strike does not mean not to buy books or not read them or not support authors, but to not actively review them, especially people who have platforms like I do. So... I'm not reviewing any of those three books, um, which sucks, but at another date, maybe I'll talk about them. <laughs> uh, I hope to, because I really liked all three of these books immensely, but again, they don't get to be talked about because of the strike. So if you need more information on that strike, I will have links to it down below for you. Uh, so yeah, be sure to check that out if you're curious. All right, next we have my comic section, which I talked about exclusively in my mid-month. So I'm actually not even gonna go through it for you. Uh, if you're curious, there's my mid-month and there's a whole dedicated reading vlog where I read all these comics that Bethany over at Beautifully Bookish Bethany sent me and discussed my thoughts on them as I read them. All right, let's go to manga. I read a lot. So I'm not gonna talk about any of the volume ones from the volume one vlog I did or any of the books I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. <laughs> because again, I've read a lot of manga, like a lot of manga. Uh, so we're gonna speed run this and we're gonna talk about what all I've read since my mid-month. First up, we have Something's Wrong With Us, volume 11. I'm so mad. I'm so happy because I think we're getting volume 12 this month and I, I'm glad this is almost over because I can't take this anymore. <laughs> I have hit the point of like, I need to know where this is going because we have went back and forth so many different ways since this volume. So yeah, that's what I need. Uh, Something's Wrong With Us is a dark romance suspense manga. This is a great series if you like dark romance or you like suspense, like thrillery stuff. It's very domestic thrillery. We are trying to find out the truth behind who killed the guy's dad and if it was the girl, the love interest girl's mom or not, basically. And it follows this whole like traditional candy making thing that is really fun to read. Then I read E. McCoy volume three, which I absolutely adored. I gave it five stars, just like something wrong with us. And I cannot wait for volume four of E. McCoy. It's just, it's so cute. It's just one of those cute shoujos that I absolutely adore. So if you are a big fan of high school set shoujos like I am, I think this is a great one to pick up. Then I read Cheeky Brat Volume 4, which I also really enjoyed. I gave it four stars. I think this was a fun continuation of their growth into a relationship and just their dynamic. It continued to be very amusing for me, so I'm happy with where we're headed. Next, I read Yakuza Lover Volume 6, 
which I gave five stars. This book series is trash, okay? Like, I know this. Objectively, it is not great. But subjectively to me, it is my kind of thing. So I am absolutely loving Yakuza Lover and I'm so glad that I read uh, volume six already and I'm just like impatiently waiting for the next volume now. So that's where we're at. Then I read volume two and three of Manly Appetites. So I did finish the series for 30 and 30 and my final thoughts on Manly Appetites is that uh, I'm mad at myself for not reading it sooner that it is one of the cutest BLs I have ever read. It is just so sweet. It is a co-working, co-working? No, it's a co-workers BL manga that honestly, if you haven't picked up yet, is just, it's adorable. Like it's so stinking cute y'all. And I can't recommend it enough because I, just good feelings all around. I'm really, really glad I finished it during this round of 30 and 30. Next, I read volume two of Daily Reports about my witch senpai, which also five stars, just like my sweet beans. It, it was such a cute little like wrap up to like their story so far. I loved it. It was just really, really cute. She manifests a new ability in this book because of how in love she is. And that was adorable to witness. Then I read Cat and Gamer volumes one and two. Uh, this is one that I finished volume one and like literally the next day I went and bought volume two because I was like, well, I need to be caught up on this immediately. <laughs> so I did get caught up on it immediately. This follows a office worker who plays video games in her free time who ends up adopting this stray kitten that came in kind of not knowing what she was doing and she's like half befriending this like pet shop worker to learn about how to take care of her cat and then she starts to cat a like Twitter account uh, and is possibly going to be found out by one of her coworkers that it's her with the cat in this Twitter account. So we'll see where that goes, but it's just adorable. Like we get like cute little snips of her life taking care of this cat and then we get snippets of the cat's like thought processes and they're just, it's cute. If you like the cat manga series that are out there, I feel like you would like this one. Then I read Catch These Hands volume three and we are getting a volume four, which I wasn't sure about when I first started this series. This was really cute. So this involved them kind of having to duke it out to come back together and figure out their issues. And I really appreciated that. And it was like, it showed good growth for their relationship. Um, and yeah, I absolutely adored this volume. Next, I read Cherry Magic, when you turn 30, you're a wizard or something like that. I'm gonna mess up the like tagline thing, but I read volume one of this. I got this as a birthday gift, so thank you so much because it was a blast and a half to read. Like, oh my goodness. I gotta pick up more volumes of this ASAP. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to pick up more volumes of this. This was so funny. So this follows two coworkers and when he turns 30, he's still a virgin and he then can read people's minds. And so when he touches people, he can read their minds and like hear their thoughts. And one of his coworkers, the thoughts he's hearing are not appropriate about him. And he's figuring out that this coworker actually has a crush on him, which is like precious and it's just really awkward and adorable. Great time, absolutely great time. Next I read LDK volumes two through 10. Now, if you're curious, these are all on Kindle Unlimited if you wanna check it out or Comixology Unlimited, depending on which service you use. This was really fun, it's very different. There's a couple hard volumes in here. Overall, I'm giving the series so far like about a four because of those volumes that were like uncomfortable, which were like two of them so far out of the two through 10 that I read in the second half of the month. Uh, but this follows two high school students who end up living together and their journey of like living together and telling people they're living together and hiding it from people and how they communicate their feelings. There's a lot of like immature behavior, we'll call it. But again, they're in high school, this makes sense. And it was really fun to read and watch them figure things out, especially as we had a, sec a secondary love interest enter the picture. And boy, hey, did our male love interest not know what to do with himself. So that was really, really cute and enjoyable to read. And I'm excited to eventually read the rest of this series, but I don't necessarily wanna pick it up in print. So I'm probably gonna watch for some ebook sales or something like that to read it. Then the last manga I read, was The Other World's Books Depend on the Bean Counter Volume 2. So I'm officially caught up in this series and we don't have a release date for three. So I'm mad at myself, but also happy because it was so good. So Volume 2 continues our little like love interest journey of the two of them, of our accountant and our night's guard and him like yelling at the accountant guy for not taking care of himself. And it was just, it's just precious. Like 
absolutely precious. So I loved that. I gave it five stars. I uh, cannot wait to get volume three in my hands. Like I cannot wait. So this is one that is definitely high on my like I will be watching for volume three list. So there's that. Okay. That is everything I read in November. Let me know in the comments what you read and loved. Did you do 30 and 30? Did you do NaNoWriMo? Let me know. Give me thoughts, opinions, or your least favorite. You know I love to hear your negative thoughts. I always think it's interesting. And if you don't want to do that, leave me a tree emoji in the comments because I just put up my Christmas tree today and I'm so excited about it and I just, I love having the lights on while I sit and read because that is the best part. I, I will not be told otherwise. That is literally the best part of the Christmas tree is the twinkly lights. So do that. I will have links to all of these books in the description box as well as links to be my friend anywhere on the internet. And I will talk to y'all in just a few days. Bye. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll